Hi there guys and welcome to day 29 of the month of Retro Brown. We are nearly at the end of the month of Retro Brown. I've honestly, it's so tiring this month, but I feel like it's been worth it. I've brought out some great content for you guys. And we're going to end the Kanto runs for this year with a Charmander. So let's have a quick chat about Charmander. Fire, fire starter of the Kanto region. Alright stats, kind of. I mean, it's got a base 309 total. And the majority of that's based in its speed, which is perfect considering we had such a slow run with Machoke last run. Fire types generally aren't too good in Gen 1. We're going to go with the rival as um, Henry the Angular. Thank you for subscribing, mate. Here is another video for you. And yeah, fire types in Gen 1 just generally aren't too good. We don't really get too many good moves, and we don't really get many good fire moves early on. We start off with um, Scratch and Growl, which means that, to be fair, it's actually not going to be too bad. Um, and we get an Ember at level 9, which will get us through Brock. I'm going to go with the name for Charmander being Lil Flame. Because he is, he's a little flame. He's got a little flame on his tail, and he is the, the baby of like the Charizard line, really. Talking about the moveset, yeah, we get Flamethrower at level, what, 30, 36, 38? That's going to be something that we'll have to wait a long time for, so we're going the majority of this game with a really mediocre fire move with Ember. And do you know what? The fire moves aren't really going to be the ones that I prioritise in this run. Because Charmander's got quite a decent attack stat for a first stage evolution. And, I mean, look at the level of moveset we get. We get Slash at level 30. That's the move I want. Because if you remember in the Meowth run, Slash was our MVP move. It was also the MVP move in... I think it was the uh, Cypher run. Because it's pretty much a critical hit every single time, it's a perfect move to be using when we've got quite high attack. In this fight here, we are going to this fight poisoned. I was really pushing against my luck here. We have, we do still have a, po a portion in our bag, but we can move on. We can pick up Ember and we can go against the Light Years Trainer. There's other moves that I'm thinking are going to be worth it on this run. Body Slam definitely in the early game. Dig definitely as well. Fire Blast maybe towards the late game. Flamethrower definitely and Slash definitely. You might be wondering, oh, we did lose against Sandshrew here. You know, we're actually going to take the experience and go straight back into that fight. There's not much experience you can get in this early game apart from it against these trainers, so the kind of around about 200 you get from that Diglett, definitely perfect. So let's go back in this at level 11. Ember is going to do good, decent damage, really. And it's three Embers to take down that Diglett, but we're on 13 HP to go against the Sandshrew. Level 12 now. Got a little bit better in our special. Our special is a little bit better than our attack. But we do manage to beat that Light Years trainer and we can move on to Brock. Yeah, you might be wondering why I'm not talking about learning Sword Stance as a move. We can learn it as a TM, but with Slash having that high critical hit chance, I honestly don't think we're going to need it because I don't want a badge boost either. I want to get through this as well as I can without badge boosting. Consider it's the last Kanto video of the, of the year. Might as well to see what we can do. Because Fire is a special type move in Gen 1, it means that those defense kills that Brock's Rock Pokemon set up are not a problem whatsoever. We also get the Burn chance as well, so when we do Burn it, he has 6 full heals per Pokemon, which is insane. But that's intentional because they didn't want you to burn the Pokemon or poison them and get through the battle very easy. This is the first real challenge of the, fight, of the run, so you, they wanted to make sure that you actually had a good challenge here to show you that this is not just... I mean, it's a kid's game, but it's also... It needs some strategy to it. But we do manage to take a first-time win against Brock because of Ember on very low HP, and we can move on to Cerulean. Now, in Cerulean, there is no point going against Misty first. It makes much more sense, and will save you so much more time to go against the rival first. But this rival is still a big problem. That Pidgeot at level 18, with its quick attacks, with its sand attacks... It does so much damage to you. We're on 3 HP going into the second Pokemon. And even though Abra doesn't do anything, the Rattata still has quick attack. So unless we could take him out in one, we wouldn't even have a chance of getting through to that Squirtle. So we've got to try this again. 
it is definitely doable to do at level 19 with just your Charmander, but it all depends on the luck you get against that Pidgeotto. Thankfully as well, we do get a burn, but then he hits a big crit, meaning we're still on low HP going into the second Pokemon. Our luck so far in this run has not been that great, but we manage, we can easily get through the Abra, it's not a problem whatsoever. The Rattata, as long as oh, it goes for quick attack, of course it goes for quick attack. And that means we're on 6 HP for the Squirtle, where we are weak to its typing. Unless it literally goes for Tail Whip every single turn, we will not get past this Squirtle. We get a lucky burn, and all he does is use Tail Whip. We manage to beat him without taking a single point of damage on that Squirtle. Why the AI there doesn't just go for Water Gun is beyond me, but I'm taking that win and I'm running with it. That took quite a few tries, I'll be completely honest with you guys. This brings us on to Misty though, once we've beaten all the Nugget Bridge trainers, we're around about level 24. We have now picked up Dig, which is a perfect move to be using in this fight, but we're still not one-shotting that Staryu. And the Starmie's going to be coming out next, and it's, yeah, a crit water gun will take us out in one. So we're going to go and get Body Slam instead. <laughs> Great move to have, of course. I love this move in Gen 1. That paralysis chance and the high attack power of it. So, so good. And it is one of my it is why it's one of my favourite moves in Gen 1. We can go pick that up. We can go and beat the rival here. And you know what? We'll actually, because we'll now need to backtrack to Cerulean, we're going to miss Surge out for the time being. We can get rid of Leah for Body Slam and we can go against the rival on the SSN. Now, this fight is usually one of the easier ones. But before we even got into that fight, I went against this gentleman trainer here. I was looking for a little bit more experience, but this Pikachu outspeeds me and paralyzes me. And now I don't want to go to the Pokemon Center, because that means I can't backtrack using Dig. Which means I'm going to have to try and do this next fight while paralyzed. And this becomes one of the hardest SSM rival fights I've ever done. Because we went into this fight paralyzed, we our luck on paralysis was shockingly awful. We're down at half HP and we're only on the second Pokemon. Now the Raticate does big damage with its Hyper Fang. It's got decent attack stats anyway when using Tackle. And we're just not looking good for the Kadabra which will outspeed us. Confusion does big damage and we're on 4 HP going into the Water Turtle which is now even stronger than before. This time he does go for a Water Gun. And I probably spent a full hour of real time actually trying to get past this fight while paralyzed because I did not want to backtrack or go and try and find a paralyzed heal. I was so determined to do this at the level we were at while paralyzed and not lose out on the time that I wanted. So the paralysis just completely decimated us in so many so many attempts and this was the only one where I managed to get good luck enough to get past it. Kadabra goes for Disable and we're on a decent amount of HP for this War Turtle. If we get hit by Paralysis, we will not win this fight. We managed to paralyze the War Turtle and tank it on 3 HP, but Bubble still takes us out. We need to get better luck. That's the only way we're getting through this fight. So, best case scenario, Pidgeotto misses an attack and we get a crit. Annoyingly, he does get a Sand Attack off, which means... Yeah, our accuracy is going to be a little bit lower. We've just got to hope that it's going to work in our favour now. And we do get tail whipped a couple of times. So we managed to get through to the Kadabra without losing any HP, which is perfect. He goes for teleport twice, meaning we're onto the War Turtle with full HP. Our luck in this, in this attempt was ridiculous. And thankfully, he doesn't even go for Water Gun. Uh, but we tank out an 11. And we get two body slams in to take the win. This took so, so long, guys. Honestly, so, so long. But we took the win. We can get cut. And we will backtrack to Misty. Where hopefully now we've got more levels and body slam. We should be winning this fight. It will still be a bit of a struggle. But we should still be winning this fight. So body slam is still not a one shot against Star. You and get hit by water gun. Second takes it down, but 51 HP should not, will probably, if they use Bubble Beam, God, even a water gun still takes us out there. <sighs> I 
this is where the Charmander run became very tedious because you cannot progress to past over to Rock Tunnel unless you beat Misty because you need the cut TM. What you need to be able to do is one one shot that star you, hope for an X defend, get a paralysis or a crit, and take the win that way. Thankfully this didn't take too many tries, but even though we were what seven levels above the star me, this was still a very hard fight. Thankfully though, our next gym leader coming up is definitely going to be a lot easier. The exploding hiker as well might be a bit of a problem. He has got the type advantage and of course, again we got paralysed by a Pokemon earlier in the in the tunnel. We weren't even outspeeding the Geodudes at this point, and I was hoping Dig would either one shot or they would just self-destruct on themselves. Thankfully we get the the Dig and uh, come on. Nope, Rock Fro takes us out. This is how bad our luck was with paralysis in this entire run. And this just continues on to the late parts of this video as well. I really did not like Paralysis, but we did get some good luck in the second attempt against the Exploding Hiker. Because we can use Dig, he'll then use Self-Destruct self sometimes. It means we can get through without taking any damage from his Pokemon. So once we've used Dig, he, just, he went for Self-Destruct again and we took out all three Pokemon via them Self-Destructing. Love to see it happen, but I hate relying on this strategy right now with getting past some of these trainers like this. But it's still funny to see. That brings us on to Lavender Tower, and I go straight against the rival here. I want to get to those higher levels so I can actually get Flamethrower. Because we're not going to get Fire Blast for still quite a long time. We need those levels and we need Flamethrower if we're going to make this run easier and quicker. Dig is still a fantastic move to use, and it brings us through to the Execute. So Ember is still a perfect move to be using here. It doesn't take him out in one. Do get the burn, but we don't get put to sleep. Perfect. That brings us on to the Kadabra. Now, if we had speed here, we're in a good position. We do, because we're 12 levels above it. And so this is why I wanted Slash as well. Slash just one shot his, his Kadabra, does half damage on the War Turtle, and we can take quite a comfortable win. So the game starts to become quite easy for Charmander. And after the, <laughs> the awful time we had in the, in the early game, we really needed a break. It definitely was well needed here. And to make it even easier, we're going to go against the one gym leader we've got the best type matchup against, and that is Erica. Saying that we've got the best type matchup doesn't mean that it's also going to be the easiest fight, because Ember is our only fire type move. Not great, it, it actually does a lot less damage than Slash, and then we get wrapped by Victory Bell, so we're not in a great position here. Slash is hands down our best move to be using with that crit chance because it essentially makes it a double power move every single hit. So it's a basically a 140 base move. Constrict is bet the best case scenario against that Tangler, and I've decided I was going to try and conserve some Slash PP, but we're down to 33 HP and then we're against the Vile Plume next. I am going to go for Dig here because I didn't want to get hit by Poison. It's a little bit of damage, but then we get put to sleep, we wake up straight away. We need to do some big damage here, so Slash nearly does around about half damage to it. The Mega Drain was not enough to save it and we do take the win. Perfect. We're getting ever closer to that Flamethrower level. And also in Celadon we can pick up our Vitamins. We are going to mostly put it into Attack and Special. There's no real point putting in HP and Defense. We really want to be a one-shot Glass Cannon to be fair. So against Giovanni, Dig is the perfect move to be using here because we don't want to get really hit by those rock throws. It's super effective against fire type Pokemon, so yeah, we really don't want to be hit by him. Rhyhorn's defense is weaker than Onyx's, so it can be taken out by one dig. Kangaskhan, I was actually quite scared for. So Comic Punch does a critical amount of damage and takes us out, so we actually lose against Giovanni here. Really annoying, but what can you do when you get a critical hit on a multi-turn move? It always... If, you get, if your first hit on a multi-turn move is a critical, it means every other hit that it does is also going to be a critical. That is only in Gen 1 as far as I am aware. When we're at level 35 though, this fight becomes a lot easier. It's annoying that I had to be level 35 for this, but what can we do? <laughs> There's a lot of trainers that we went against, and we're, we're going against a lot of optional trainers as well. The sooner I can get to Flamethrower, 
the better this run is going to get. So level 39, we finished Giovanni battle number one, and we can move off to go and beat Surge again. Because, well, again, we haven't beaten him yet. We need to go and beat Surge, and this is not going to be a hard fight whatsoever. We're over leveled. We've got fantastic move set, and he's quite low leveled. So it's going to be very, pretty much quite a well, as you can see here, one shot in every single one of his Pokémon. He doesn't even get a look in. And Surge, I'm not even going to try and demote you in this video because we played quite unfair by ha coming in so overleveled. That's badge number four, and it brings us on to the next point of the game that we can go against. So, I opted straight away to go to Future City, and I steal a bike from the guy in Uncycling Road because I didn't want to go and waste time there. And we can move on to Koga. Because we've got Dig on our moveset, I actually think we could do what we did against the Exploding Hiker again. We could dig away from the self-destructs, and we have also picked up Flamethrower as well. So we've got a stab fire move with decent attack. It's like what? 85 base um, power? Fantastic move to have. But Slash is still our MVP move. Even with the stab bonus, Slash is still doing more. But we get it disabled, so we have to switch to Flamethrower, and we've been... Ah, we've been smoke screen quite a bit. We do manage to paralyze that muck, but we do get poisoned in the meantime. There's two Pokemon left, and we've got to make sure we get past this coffin as quick as possible. We don't want to take too much damage in poison, or for him to chip away at his smog and tackle. Slash is finally not disabled, and it should be a two shot with Slash. Nope, gonna be a free hit. That's not good. <laughs> That brings us finally onto the Weezing when we got around about half HP. Just gonna go straight for Dig and hope for the self destruct. It works in our favour and we take the win. Get in. Go on, Lil Flame. Your big brain strats are nothing against Koga. So there's not really other, too many other places we can go right now, so we might as well go try Silvco. And this rival is gonna be a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. His Pidgeot is quite strong even though it hasn't got the best moves and it still has sand, sand Attack at this point. He does only seem to go for Whirlwind in this in this attempt though. Useless move. Absolutely useless move. And that brings us on to the Growlithe where we can dig it down into the dirt. Like Next up is the, exe the ex I can't get my words out, the Execute. And it goes down with one Flamethrower. Alexam is next and we are going to go for Body Slam over Slash. And then we get disabled with Body Slam, so we waste a turn, and thankfully he only goes for a Confusion, which annoyingly we hit ourselves in Confusion from. And we're not on very good HP for this Blastoise. Slash is definitely our best move to be using here, and strangely all he does is go for Withdraw. Because we're doing critical hits, it ignores any stat increases. And with that we actually take a first time victory, which I was not expecting whatsoever. Who would have thought? a Charmander would take a first time victory against Rival 5. Like, absolute insanity. This is where the run became much more interesting. So Giovanni, because we've got Dig on our moveset, shouldn't be much of a problem. We one shot that Nidorino, Kangaskhan is out next, and you know, I'm going to go for Slash, it's still one of our most powerful moves. It's going to take three Slashes to take him down. We do take a lot of damage in hindsight, but with two Pokemon left, we should be able to tank this with using Dig. It's going to take two Digs on the Rhyhorn, which isn't great. We're on 23 HP now for Nidoqueen. I'm not actually sure we're going to be able to do this one. Okay, we're going to Dig past the Body Slam and it does half damage. He goes for a Guard Spec, which is perfect. Gives us a chance to get a second Dig in without taking any HP loss. We're doing pretty well right now. But that's all going to change very, very soon. We had a very hard early game, quite a decent mid game, but then the, the later game is going to become very difficult. Let's go try Sabrina before we even go and try Blaine, because it's going to save us a bit of time going to her first. So, Slash is the best move to be using against the Psychic type Pokemon. They've got very weak defenses, but they've got very high speed. Doesn't work in our favor very well. Confusion still does big damage, but two slashes can take down the Mr. Mime. Venomoth is actually weak to fire, so we're going to go for Flamethrower here. It's still not one shot, and we take a big side beam to the chest. 
We do hit ourselves with confusion and poison powder. Oh, this is not going our way. 9 HP against this Alakazam. I don't think we can do this. He goes for a cover. We hit a slash. Can he go for a cover? Nah, there we go. <laughs> I knew we weren't going to do this first time. Of course we weren't going to do this first time. So what do we have to do differently? Well, first off, I went to level 45. Hope, and because of that level, we can now outspeed that Kadabra. We can outspeed the Mr. Mime. And pretty much nearly one shot in all of the Pokemon with Slash, which is better. The Venomoth, of course, is weak to fire type moves, so we're going to go Flamethrower. And it's still not a one shot. We do get poisoned again, but we're, considering we're full HP, I'm feeling a lot more confident this time around. I could learn Fire Spin, but I don't want to use Cheesy, cheesy Strats. Fire Flamethrower will take him out a lot quicker. Yes, we could trap him in the Vortex, but nah. With that, we're just going to use two slashes, take down the Alakazam, and move on to Blaine. Blaine is not going to be too much of a problem. He does hit hard with takedown, but with Dig, we should have a good chance. Looking at our moveset, there's we, not really anything more we can go for. We could learn Mega Kick, which is 120 base power move. But with 75 accuracy, it might as well just be zero. That's why you usually keep with Body Slam with 100% accuracy. It just makes it so much easier for you. We're going to this fight after going against quite a few trainers in his gym. And we are one shot in his, his first stage evolution Pokemon. The Rapidash is a bit bulkier. So I don't think a dig is going to be able to take it down. But as long as we can hit one dig. Oh, we do take it down in one. Okay, fair enough. That brings out the Arcanine. We're going to go for dig again. Bound about half damage and it goes for a super potion, which should work in our favour. And we take him down with two digs. Okay, so Blaine was actually relatively very easy. Didn't even go into that fight at full HP and we still managed to beat him with a Charmander. Who's the better fire type Pokemon trainer now, Blaine? Eh? <laughs> I think it's me. That brings us on to Giovanni, the last gym leader of Kanto. We have picked up Fire Blast as our TM, but I might wait before actually teaching that move. Dig is super effective against most of his Pokemon. The one that I'm most worried about is this Duck Tree because it is very speedy. It does dig a hole, we dig a hole as well, but then he goes for a guard spec, meaning that he hits us. Ah. It was annoying. The way to get past that Duck Tree is to hope that the dig works in your favour. Because if you hit Dig second, you will actually hit him with Dig. And it was can, a canny few tries to actually get past this Doug Trio, but the Doug Trio, as it seems to be on quite a lot of the runs, because of its speed, makes it the worst Pokemon to go against on his on his on his roster. But when it goes for a guard spec first, we can use Slash, meaning we can get through it in one hit. Body Slam will still do massive damage from that Nida Queen, but second dig will take it out. Essentially we want to get through to this Rhydon and hope that all he wants to do is horn drill. Or fissure us. We've got 50 HP. We may be able to tank one stomp, but I'm not too confident on that. And because we outspeed, fissure will not hit us. So, a couple of digs will take down that ride on, and we take a win first, well, second time. And that's all G uh, Gym Leader's done. That brings Charmander, Little Flame, onto the Pokemon League on its own. But before that, of course, we have the rival to contest with. Henry is going to be a bit of a problem. This rival fight is always annoying. I'm not too sure how we're going to do. We don't have any one hit KO moves. So, oh well, let's see how we do. We're level 51 going into this and we're going to go straight for a slash. It doesn't even do half damage and this is not a good start. We need to do three slashes against the Pidgeot to be able to take it out. And we haven't lost too much HP in hindsight. Rhyhorn is next and we're going to go for Dig. And it's not even one shot in it. So we're taking even more damage from Stomp. Brings us on to the Growlithe. This should be a one shot with Dig. Please be a one shot. Finally, finally. One one shot in this fight. Execute as well. It's weak to Flamethrower, so we're going to go straight for that. And this is also a one shot with a crit. Brings us on to the Alakazam. We can outspeed. We've got a good chance here. But he goes for Psychic straight away. And it's a critical hit. That Alakazam is very speedy. And in Gen 1, speed dictates your crit chances. If you've got very high base speed, you are going to do a lot of damage. 
So annoyingly, we had to go and train up to level 59 before we even had a chance of actually getting past him. This is where people who use sword stance probably would be able to do this at a lower level, but I did not want to use sword stance. I want to get through this without using any badge booster moves. I hope you guys will appreciate that, <laughs> the struggle that that then became. But I want to show it's possible without badge boosting. We can get back through to the Alakazam and level 59. We're probably still not going to outspeed, but we might be able to tank a Psychic. It goes for Reflect, which is why we go for Slash. It circumvents any defense increases that they do. That brings us on to the Blastoise. Now, if we get hit by a Hydro Pump here, we're done. It goes for Withdraw. And this is exactly mirroring the same fight in Silphco. If he does that in the very final fight, I will... I will be howling. <laughs> So, we've beaten the rival, we've come to the Elite Four, and immediately we have a roadblock. That being Lorelei and her Water and Ice types. We have the worst matchup to go against these Pokemon with. Because as soon as we use one attack, they're going to go for an Aurora Beam, lower our speed if they can. But the fact that Slash doesn't even two-shot that Dugong is a big, big problem. Dig does around about the same as Slash. And Body Slam is just not helping us in any respect here. We do manage to get past it at level 61. But this is a real problem. Cloyster is up next and if it uses Clamp, we are completely done for. We need to get past this without him using Clamp. So, how are we going to do this? I have no idea why the, the footage has really slowed down here. But, yeah, we're going to see how we do. So... Flamethrower actually does really good damage on the Cloyster. And, yeah, we, we, we do lose. We need to go another attempt into it. Flamethrower is the best move to use against Cloyster. It's got low special, which is why Flamethrower does so much damage. Against Slowbro, we're going to go for Body Slam, get the Paralysis, and then go for Slashes to take it down. It circumvents any stat changes it does to itself. And makes it quite an easy Pokemon to fight. We are level 68 now, we've had to use our rare candies, I, I gave up and had to use them. And this brings us on to the Lapras, quite decent HP, if we can get the Paralysis off, we've got a good chance, but Hydro Pump hits and does massive damage. So it's going to be another reset. We have had quite a lot with this Charmander, I'm not going to lie. But we've got a strategy which can work, we've just got to get it working for us. So that stat decrease is the worst thing that could happen there because that means now Body Slam is not going to do anywhere near enough damage. Thankfully we still do have Slash which will circumvent that. But level 68 as well, Flamethrower is nearly one shot in that Cloyster and we get through without him using Clamp. When it comes to Slowbro, Slash is going to take three hits to take it out. And worst thing you can do is go for Water Gun, but it's not going to do that. It's going to keep going for Withdraw and we get an easy win. Through the Jinx now without losing any HP. And we take it down in one. So we're on full HP going into Lapras at level 68. Slash will do oh, still under half damage. So I, I went for a risky play. I went for Flamethrower. She goes for Suit. Suit Proportion and then finally puts us into a range where we can take it out. If that Hydro Pump had hit, I would have screamed. <laughs> it was... It took quite a while to get past Lorelei. Understandably so with a Pokemon such as Charmander. But that brings us on to Bruno. Bruno should be a much easier matchup. Dig is going to be the perfect move to use against the Onyx. It's not going to take it out in one because it does have ridiculous defences. But we managed to take him out. And we move on to the Hitmonchan. So all these Pokemon have got quite bad defences and also quite bad special. Ice Punch thankfully again doesn't freeze us this run. And we move on to the Hitmonlee. So, Hitmonlee goes for a high jump kit, which does massive damage. And we've got 72 HP to go against the Onyx and the Machamp. So it's not a good position to be in, really. We actually could lose against him here. 52 HP going into the Machamp. This is not looking great. Come on, Flamethrower. He goes for an extra defend. Perfect. We win. We win. So this time, Bruno does not beat us. But that was still a very close fight. It brings us on to Agatha as well, which is going to be one of the harder fights in the Elite Four. Our Pokemon are very quick. We're not very quick. If we can outspeed them, Dig is the perfect move to sweep her team. 
but we get hit by a nightshade and we're not in a good position to start off with. Golbat is going to do... Eh, it's going to go for Haze, which isn't a good... It's the best thing for us, really. Haunter is next, and we're going to go for another dig. We do outspeed the Haunter, which is really good, and we are level 69 in this fight. Wait. Arbok is next, and Dig will do massive damage. If we can outspeed this final Gengar, we will win. He goes for Nightshade, we go for Dig, and it's a one-shot, so we take the win here. Relatively not too bad. That then brings us on to my most feared matchup for this entire run, and that comes down to just two Pokemon. His starting lead, Gyarados who loves to spam Hydro Pump. I really had no answer for this. Hydro Pump, even though we're 11 levels above, just one shot. And that's not even with a critical hit. And he will always go for Hydro Pump because of the AI. I had to get up more levels, I had to go back out and I had to get up more levels. And even at level 73, we were still getting taken out in one. But what I noticed after a few attempts at level 73, his Hydro Pump was a range. We managed to tank it on 7 HP. Meaning with changing up the moveset that we had and putting rest on our moveset, we could get through his Pokemon and give ourselves a chance to always get our HP back. This is why I'm glad that rest is a move in Gen 1 that pretty much every Pokemon can learn. It means that we've actually got a chance to stall out Pokemon until we find the right optimum moment to attack. And trust me, that takes a lot of a lot of patience. With them using agility, with them using slam and hyper beam of all things, we don't have the greatest moveset against us to get through most of these. And of course he uses hyper potions, of course he uses hyper potions. Slash doesn't even take him out in one. So basically we've got to wait for the right moment to attack. And of course the Aerodactyl is very scary. We need to use Fire Blast on it to take it down to around about half HP. We burn it, which is perfect, meaning that his attack is now being dropped. We can use Rest and let the burn do its damage. Worst, worst case scenario, he gets a Hyper Beam crit, which is very possible without Aerodactyl because he's got a very high speed stat. Thankfully, he doesn't go for it, but Bite still gets a crit and does big damage. We're at 93 HP going into the Dragonite. And basically, we want to make sure that we can... Oh, he's using Barrier, which is not good. Good thing we've got Slash still. Slam will do big damage, but using Slash, it's going to be about a free hit KO. It doesn't matter if he uses Barrier, we actually want him to use Barrier and Agility. Slam does another big amount of damage, but we take him out with a final Slash. And that's how you beat Lance as his Charmander. But we are at one of the highest levels that I've had to be in a long time to even get through this part of the game. It's a good thing that Charman is in quite a quick level of group, because it means we didn't actually lose too much time with training. But the final fight is on, and Henry the Angler, let's see how we do. So we start off Pidgeot versus Charmander, Slash is doing half damage, and Wing Attack is doing barely anything perfect. This is a great start. Alakazam is next, and he outspeeds us still. Psybeam does fantastic amount of damage, but Slash Critical does huge damage. And we take it out in one, leading us onto the Rhydon. So at this point, we can rest up. He's going to use Leer and um, like Tail Whip on us, which means we will get some slight amount of badge boost. Not the, gr not the worst thing, not the best thing. But we can then use Fire Blast to take it down. With those badge boosts, our attacks do become fast, um, well, a lot better. And we can take it down with two Fire Blasts. Next up is the Arcanine. And now we don't have Dig, we're going to have to rely on Slash. So it's going to take two hits to take it down. Three hits, that was a range. And Takedown does phenomenal damage. Next up is Executor. So we have had a lot of defense drops, so meaning his barrages will do quite a lot of damage. Yeah, quite a lot of damage. And if he gets a five turn, that is really annoying. And I want to be on as much HP as possible for the incoming Blastoise after it. But I'm not even sure we're going to get to it. You know, we're just going to go Fire Blast. And we don't even take it out in one. And then we get put to sleep. So it didn't work out in our favour. We do manage to wake up before it takes us out and use Rest. But we're not in the greatest position right now. 
144 HP against its Blastoise. Critical hits can take three hits like normal. And will he do the same as Silphco? It is, it's the same as Silphco. In the last three rival fights, all he did was go for withdraw, and we take the win against the rival. Three rival fights in a row, that exact same thing happened. Please someone calculate the luck on that for me, because that is ridiculous. <laughs> but Charmander has finally done it, yes at a very high level, but what time did we finish on? If this even makes it into CT, I'll be very, very surprised. Let's see what happened. So, level 74, Little Flame has managed to complete the game at, at 3 hours 52. Wow! That's an incredible time! How did we do it at 3 hours 52 minutes? That's insane! But that higher level is mean that it's going to be put into a really low tier. This is going to be a very hard Pokemon to rank. Anyway, Charmander has completed the run. Let's see what we get next time on the wheel for the start of the new year, actually. This is the final Kanto video of the year. Let's see what we get for the first Kanto video of next year. I hope everyone's been having a very good day of Christmas period. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. And we'll see what we're going to choose. So we've got Golbat and Rhyhorn first. You know what? Rhyhorn would be an interesting one. It's very slow, but it's very bulky. So that could be fun. Fero. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we're going to go with Rhyhorn. Let's start off the new year with a rock type Pokemon. This is going to hurt as well. Anyway, guys, thank you for getting this point in the video. Please like, subscribe, share, all that sort of thing. And if you've become a new subscriber in this year, I really appreciate it, you legends. We'll see you in the new year. Take care.